Hey VC, Tony here, Tony's LPs are us. Uh, thanks for stopping in. I appreciate that, I appreciate the uh, subs. If you haven't subbed, uh, please hit that button. Really appreciate it, really wanna build the channel. Uh, today is the uh, is part of the summer vinyl tag that Noble Records started about a week ago, I believe. I just found out about it today. I was watching Rachel's Ghosts morning show, which is uh, whimsical, informative, political, record tape cd everything people from all over the world uh come in and it's a really good show so today i, I learned that um noble records which is down south in the u.s uh is doing a summer vinyl tag yes 20 questions noble records is a great channel it's a great record store I haven't been there but if i ever get down to that area i believe it's down in the carolinas i will definitely stop in with my credit card and i know he has some really cool stuff there but there's 20 questions some of them are difficult some of them are easy uh some of them you have a lot of choices uh my thing is i have stuff uh in different parts of my collection so i had to pull stuff i had to decide uh you know i had multiple some of them i had multiple answers for multiple things to show and uh, the tough part is going to be putting all this stuff away. So thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoy this segment. Uh, please tell your friends about LPs Are Us. We have a, uh, a lot of good stuff. We do uh, videos. We do reviews. You know, we do, you know, we do it all. So, uh, and I hope you like it. I hope you uh, enjoy it. And we try to answer all comments. I really, it's not a lot of comments, but I like to, I like to get you know, involved with the, uh, with the viewers. So here we go. First question. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. An album or song with summer in the name. Now I picked two. There's a lot of them. I didn't pick the typical, uh, beach boys or stuff like that, but I picked this. This is a great album in its own right. Seals and Croft, summer wind, Seals and Crofts, I should say summer wind, uh, this album just sounds so good as well. That's why I picked it. It's a uh, a nice green original Warner. It has the gate fold. It's a matted white, so it gets dirty fast. But Summer Breeze, this record, not only Summer in the title, but it just, it's audiophile sound. Uh, summer Breeze is just great. Another one I picked for sentimental reasons, because I love uh, Louis Armstrong and Ella. Uh, Porgy and Bess, of course, the classic Summertime, as you all know. This is a uh, German pressing, and uh, just the just this alone you should salivate, because this sounds great. It's on Verb, German, Gemma, and that's my uh, two. I picked two. Uh, next question is... Uh, latest heavy pull. Now that means uh, what I, I think. I think what he meant is, did you spend a lot of money on on stuff? And there's there's some albums I spent more money on than others. Um, this one I re I really didn't need to buy it, but I really wanted it. it was a record store day uh, find, and I waited in line to get it because I really love the original of this album, and that's the uh, Chicago at Carnegie Hall, and this was. Um, this was reissued uh, a few years ago. This was uh, Restoration and Max, uh, Mix Engineer was uh, Tim Jessup. He did a really nice job on here. Comes with a booklet, comes with the posters. Uh, the, these shows are from April 1971 on three LPs. So uh, that's a heavy pull, but I've spent more on records, of course. Uh, I could spend more on any any one step that I that I have, but I don't want to show one step or UHQR. That was a great deal. I'm happy I, I got that. Next one is um, a whack-a-mole. Now, a whack-a-mole, I just learned today from uh, watching Noble's Records introduction to this vinyl tag. A whack-a-mole is a whack-a-mole album is a random pull album. Now, I just did something the other day which I called is having too many records a blessing or a curse and then i proved that i don't know what i have by doing a whack-a-mole i didn't know it was a whack-a-mole it was a random pull so my future uh random pulls with um with respect to mazzy who i think does that does a whole thing on whack-a-moles 
Mazzy has a great channel as well. Um, I didn't know what it, I just thought it was something he made up. So I, I didn't watch the first, his first whack-a-moles where he probably said what a whack-a-mole was. So I learned what a whack-a-mole was today. I'm going to do a whack-a-mole uh, here for my, uh, I don't know what's in here. So we're going to do a quick, let's see, quick whack-a-mole. Okay, here we go. Wow, great one. Rod Stewart. Every picture tells a story. I believe this is Glenn Johns who uh, engineered this. Uh, this has a weird type of cover to it. It's like a trifold cover. But a great album, and that's my Whack-A-Mole. Let's just do another one. Let me get something that's kind of bizarre. Let me see here. Uh, okay, close your eyes. Here we go. Ooh, Mary from Peter, Paul, and Mary, a solo record, Gatefold. This is nice. Uh, let's see what, what kind of label it's on. This is on Warner, and it's a green Warner, so this is really so. Two whack-a-moles. Um, next question is an album cover with an animal on it. I picked two again. Um, I picked the quintessential Beach Boys, and I'm really proud of this because I got this out of, uh, this could actually fit another, another one of these questions because I got this out of, a, this was a, like a steel deal. This is a mono, it's, I would say it's excellent to near mint, it's my first excellent to near mint Beach Boys Pet Sounds. I have a dual phonic that's kind of like VG-ish, VG plus, but this is excellent. So I have this one, Animals, and then this one's a, as a homage to all the hype on Rhino uh, this the last couple of weeks. Rhino just reissued this record, Relayer, and if you see, Relayer has two horses on it. It's a little, like a mystical scene, maybe Lord of the Rings or Gates of Delirium and going through the gate. So you could see there two horses and on the back I have my uh, plastic on it. But uh, on the back uh, there's a snake, which is really animal. It's a reptile. So uh, but here you have the two horses. So that's that. Uh, next one up is an album with a great story. Now, this is a story that no one is going to believe because Maybe I dreamt it, but I know I, I know it happened. Uh, me and my brother-in-law, Big John, when he comes over from uh, New York, we go to a, a record store in Pennsylvania called uh, Double Decker. And it's no longer there, but it was a great record store run by a guy named uh, Jamie, who was one of the best people you want to meet in a record store. He wouldn't yell at you if you took a record out and looked at it, which no record store owner should do. But... We used to go there, uh, you know, once a year, take the take the trip because he had a, a room, probably the size of my house, uh, next to his, in his store that was called the Fifty Cent Room, and in the Fifty Cent Room, you'd find things like Command Records, you'd find things like, uh, you know, uh, oddball stuff, stuff that was, you know, maybe a double record, one record was in it, soundtracks, musicals, classical. And you find rock in there. I found a lot of good rock. Um, things, you know, things like the time, uh, stuff that is off the radar. Like old, you know, old America records that, you know, not the first one, but maybe the fourth or fifth record that people aren't interested in. But I had this premonition. I said, I'm going to go in there and I want to find a Dylan, uh, Claudia, Claudia, Claudia Cardinale cover. If you know that Claudia and Art Car Car Claudia Cardinale cover from Blonde on Blonde. It was originally issued as a gatefold, and she was on the one of the uh, slots. And Dylan just liked her photo, saw it from his manager, from the the guy who designed his records. He goes, "Yeah, put her in it." He didn't know her. He never got permission. Well, of course, she got wind of it. And she says, "You know, halt, deceased, desist, desist, and deceased." whatever, and um, the record was subsequently uh, changed over to to a new 
you know, to a new um, cover. And here's the original. And I walk into the record room, the 50 cent room, and I see this sticking out. Now, usually, if this is in there, the record's trashed. And these records are trashed. This could actually fit another category. But I swear, I had this premonition that I was going to find a blonde on blind Cardinale. And I did. And as you can see her here, that's her there with the uh, a brunette or, or black hair there is Dylan. And they replaced that in the subsequent pressings. So this is one of my pride and joys. I didn't have an original of this. But I'm going to show you the records. Two I Columbia's. They're, they're completely trashed. Uh, I would never even put them on my table. Um, right there. Like I said. So this actually could count as another Two I Columbia. Mono. So this record in VG Plus or Excellent Condition is a very valuable record. So I was able to find this just because I had a like an inkling to it. I had this vibe and you know whether you believe it or not uh, that's a true story. You could ask John. An album that we would be surprised to see in your collection. Well I don't think you'll be surprised to see anything in my collection because I'm not surprised to see anything in my collection. I have everything. I have children's records. I have operas. I have sound uh, sound effects. I have um, jazz, rock, uh, bluegrass, uh, vocals. Doesn't matter. If I see it in the wild, I will buy it. But I never talk about this. But I have a pretty good, pretty good uh, collection of classicals. And this is one of my uh, box sets, Beethoven edition. I believe this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This has nine albums in it. Made in Germany. It's, of course, Deutsche Grammophon. Now, I have a lot of classicals. I used to collect, well, if I see them, I still collect them. You know, the uh, RCAs, the Shady Dogs, the Mercuries, um, the De Deutsche Grammophon, of course. Used to be able to find these very in near mint condition, uh, or mint condition, I should say, because classical people were very neat. And they still are very neat, but they don't sell their records anymore. They give their records away to thrift shops. So I was able to get that uh, a while ago. And that's the uh, the Ninth Symphony of Beethoven. It's a box set. So classical music, I, I dig it. I just don't have time to get into it. Big John, he's my classical music guy. If I have a question, um, I refer to him. And I used to, I used to actually buy him classical records from thrift shops. Uh, next one is a pretty cool one. I'm pretty uh, happy to show this one. It's a Cheap Heat. Now, from from Noble Records, Cheap Heat was something that is a is a record that you could pick up for you know five, ten bucks, whatever, whatever you consider uh, inexpensive. Today, anything under twenty is inexpensive, and that's this record, uh, Lighthouse One Fine Morning. Uh, this is on a Canadian label, I believe. Can't see it here. Oh, evolution, evolution. Now the, the the title track on side two is five minutes and eleven seconds. One fine morning, and that is off the charts sound wise. That's why I picked this. This was recorded in Canada. This is a American uh, issue, but it's in it's um, just off the charts, and you can see I paid five bucks for it. And uh, at 20 bucks, it's a bargain. So if you ever see this, Lighthouse, or just play it. You have to play the vinyl on a good system. And the piano is, if you know the song, you can listen to it. But if you know the song, the piano on this is, it's, it's in the room. And that's a cheap heat. Uh, let me see, I might have lost my place here. Hold on one second. Okay, next one is a 45 or alternate format. We're only on number eight. So this is another one of my prizes. Prizes collection. 10-inch specialty records from the first Little Richard album. And that was introducing Little Richard, I believe. This is Little Richard and his band. 
Never played these, but they're in pretty good shape. This is all around the world. Girl can't help it. Uh, rip it up. Little Richard and his band. 220 specialty records. Flip side is Ready Teddy. 10 inches. Very nice, right? Very nice. Long Tall Sally. 207. Little Richard and his band. And Slipping and a Sliding. Little Richard and his band. 207. Now these one records were two minutes to put them in the jukebox. Now, these are 10 inch. I, I, I never played them. I assume they're 78s. So uh, let me know what you think about that. And again, uh, thanks everyone for watching. Thank you all for subbing. And if you haven't subbed, please uh, sub. We really would appreciate that. Okay, next one is a favorite music documentary or biopic. And uh, where is that here? I have that here. I think that's the next question. Uh, favorite music documentary. And that's one of my favorites. I have quite a bit. But this is Elvis, Viva Las Vegas. And this was a documentary that I, f I believe was first broadcast on television. Probably on NBC. That seems to be his, uh, his thing. And you could see the... Over here. Now this is a documentary that goes into Elvis in Vegas, and it uh, has a bunch of great stars on it: Nora Jones, Faith Hill, uh, Celine Dion. I hope she's doing okay. Um, uh, Toby Keith, Aerosmith, Joe Perry uh, does Mystery Train on here. Bon Jovi, Willie Nelson, Richie Sambora. But this goes into Elvis in Vegas, and it just shows that what a not only innovator early on in the 50s, 60s, 70s, but when he did Vegas, he started a whole trend of these residencies. And it goes into uh, Beyonce's on here. She talks about how Elvis was the coolest dude, how he started, the, he had the first entourage. So pick this up. This is kind of cheap. This is a it's also available on DVD. Uh, not 4K yet, probably never will be, but it's on TV, but this has extra footage. Uh, it's a really great one if you like Elvis, or if you just want to know about Elvis, I would pick that up. And uh, a box set. Now, I picked out a couple of box sets, which are kind of hard to find. This box set here, the Essential... 60s Masters, Volume from uh, Nashville to Memphis. This is still sealed. This is a 6 LP set. I don't know if you can see it. I'll hold it up if you want to see what's on there. But it's kind of glary. Sorry about that. But this has the hype. Special limited edition, 10,000 editions only. It includes one original U.S. 29-cent Elvis stamp and first day of issue envelope. It has photos, it has a book, a sheet of all his records. And this I bought, this could also fit another question, still sealed at a record convention up North Jersey for $30. And my brother-in-law urged me to buy it. I wasn't going to buy it because I have everything that's on there. And here's the companion piece to it. It's the complete 50s Masters. And this is fantastic. This I did open. And this is a German pressing, I believe. Limited, uh, 15,000 copies. Three rare bo bonus photos for framing. Um, you know, look this up. Elvis, the king of rock and roll, the complete 50s masters. Uh, let me see how many records. Six albums, but this is heavy because of all the stuff in it. I did show that on my um, my Elvis video. I did a few a few months back. Uh, next up, we're almost there, folks. Next up is most trash record. Well, I really don't have a lot of trash records. I do. I don't know where they are. Uh, so I pulled this one out. Uh, keep this for sentimental reasons, probably. 
you know, trade it to someone who wants an original help. Crackles, it's capital, it's pretty trashed. Most of my records are in clean condition, uh, but I do have things that, you know, I would pick them up if I see a Beatle record. Uh, once I picked up a Kiss record that I sold, when I looked at it, you would think it was VG minus, but it played at, like a VG plus record. It just played great, and I described it. I sold it to someone, and they never had a problem. They wanted an original Kiss. I forget which one it was. It was an early Kiss record, but trash record help. Uh, next up, we have a local album from a local personality, local bands, and around these parts, when I go to band, when I see local bands that do original material, they're not really selling albums, so I really don't buy CDs that in that manner. I'll, I'll buy them at thrift shops and things. So I really don't have that I know. I probably have them somewhere, like local albums. But I did pull this out uh, to compensate. Mark Knopfler, Local Hero, from the soundtrack. If you don't know about this and you're a completist, right there on water, Local Hero. It's a soundtrack music by Mark. But I did find a local personality who lives in a few towns um, by where I live, and I met him a few times, and I had him sign this, and that is a very famous person. That is Joe Piscopo, and you can see he signed it. And there's Joe on the back as the chairman of the board. Now, if you don't know, if you young folks out there don't know, uh, Joe Piscopo was on Saturday Night Live, and he did uh, a few different segments, different characters. He did Sinatra. And he sang uh, new songs of of that of our era in the style of Frank Sinatra. Now this is a great record, okay? And I have it signed. I love this record. Um, and this just just as a just as a quick note, he does in the voice of Frank Sinatra. He's pretty good. He does whole concerts as Frank. I met him. I met Joe when he signed this at the unveiling of the Frank Sinatra statue in Hoboken on the waterfront uh, on the other side of New York City. So I was really happy to meet Joe. And here he does, I love rock and roll, cold as ice, under my thumb, hit me with your best shot, born to run, I know what boys like, smoke on the water, and life during worst wartime, talking heads. And then he does rehearsals on here. So... Uh, this is a great this is a great record and it's signed by him. Local guy. Uh, next up, we're almost done, is a album from far away. And I was trying to look for stuff like, you know, Malaysia, Singapore. I know I have them, but I, they're mixed in. So I just pulled out my red Beatles uh, Japanese pressing. You can see there. This has all the uh, booklets inside. It has the, uh, the Japanese um, sheets in, J in Japanese. They, they give you a really nice uh, discography of the Beatles in, let me see if I can open this without ruining it, in uh, Japanese. So this was a Christmas present from my brother-in-law, Big John, and here's the cover booklet and um, another booklet in here and really nice this is a better packaging than the uh, domestic and a better packaging than the new reissue which was the triple set but Japanese far away as far as pretty far uh, next up we have we're almost at the end a soundtrack record. Now, I have a lot of soundtracks. I dig soundtracks, but I pulled one of my best sounding soundtracks and my best, uh, what I have the most soundtracks of, and that's James Bond. I have prob I have every James Bond soundtrack available, I believe, and I have all the uh, offshoots that I did. I did two videos on them uh, about a year ago, and they run about 
45 minutes to an hour each. But this record is a classic, one-sided, 45 RPM, 45 series of Casino Royale. This is the 1967 Casino Royale, different from the Casino Royale that started the Daniel Craig um, era of Bond. This record by Herb Albert, uh, Cas uh, Casino Royale with the E, the theme played by Herb and the Tijuana Brass, and then The Look of Love is sung by Dusty Springfield. And you would think that they are in the room. It's classic record series, uh, special one-sided pressings, uh, four records, just uh, phenomenal. This, by the way, on Coldrum RCA is a great sounding record in its own right. So I believe that's why they picked it. Rumor has it that the original tapes were damaged uh, beyond repair. Don't know if that's true because that's in folklore. But this is, if that's true, then this is the best you're ever going to hear this. Unless someone um, like Classics did this on a, uh, on a, on a reel-to-reel. -reel. So, great record. If you're a Bond person, this is a, uh, this is a grail for me anyway. I bought it on eBay. I was really happy with one of the most expensive records I bought. I don't spend a lot of money on my records. I was, luckily I was around when records were, uh, were le less expensive than they are now. Uh, a silver lining in vinyl. Oh, a vinyl, a channel shootout. And, um, your highest recommendation. Well, my highest recommendation right now is I, I forgot to pull it, but it would be the the Black Sabbath uh, Rhino. The first Black Sabbath. You all know what it looks like. I talked about it. So that would be one of my highest recommendations today. And the Asia box set, uh, which was just released by uh, Analog Productions, UHQR. Those are two of my uh, standouts. If you could get Asia... You're going to have to pay a little more. I believe it might be close to selling out. If not, jump on it. And, of course, the Rhino, I know, sold out in a matter of days. So that's the Rhino. That's a, one of my heavy recommendations. Um, highest on your want list. Uh, I was going to pull a, uh, you know, a repro of that, but my highest want list, of course, is to find that uh, yesterday and today butcher cover peeled. Um, not unpeeled, whatever state. Uh, that's one of my want records, and you know, someday I'll find one. If I walk into a shop and it's at a good price, I'll pick it up. I really want that record. I'm not going to spend a fortune, but uh, for me, if I get it at a good price, I'll pick that up. So that's one of my want lists. And a channel shout out, which I watch a lot of channels. I, everybody I watch, I think are very good. Some people are boring. Um, you may think I'm boring, but I try to give you my passion for the, for vinyls. Uh, some people just show records without a lot of dialogue. That's cool. Some people like that. They get a lot of hits. So, but one of my main guys is um, Kenny's Audiophile Record Review Channel. He's got a great channel. Just a nice guy. Just a uh, me and him are. Uh, I consider him a, a buddy, a soulmate. He has the same taste as I do, and um, a really cool guy. So I'm giving a shout-out to uh, Kenny's Audiophile. There's a lot of people I could give shout-outs to. Uh, he doesn't need the shout-out. He has his channels moving along. But if you don't know about him, go check him out. A very cool guy. There's a lot. I could I could name a lot. Um, but I just, you know, thought of him right, right now and give him a little bit of shout-out. Because we do uh, talk in our comments quite a bit. But there's a lot. Um, Vinyl Richie, you know, there's so many of them. There's, there's quite a bit. But next one is a silver lining in vinyl. Well, the silver lining in vinyl now is that it's, if it's done right, it's being done right. If you get a, a good label like the Rhino High, High Fidelity Series or a, a one step that's done properly, or a UHQR, or uh, a mastered, a remastered album that you always hope could sound a little better. That's a silver lining. Um, and for me, it's a silver lining because I was able to do a channel and share my, my passion and my love for records. 
and share my stories for records. And, um, you know, I've been collected for a while, so I wanted to share that. A steal of a deal is this one. And the reason I picked this one is I got a lot of steals, but Walsh for Debbie was just reissued on a box set. I believe it's uh, UHQR. Um, and we we're just talking about that. But this is a Walsh for Debbie. Bill Evans. This is on Riverside. This record is near mint. Got it at a really unbelievable price point. You can see that there. So Waltz for Debbie, Steal of a Deal. Uh, I don't think it's one of the greatest albums of all time, but it was going for a lot of money. And I may have came down now that, they're, that the reissue's out, but if you want an original on Riverside in mint condition or near mint condition, I should say, that's the one. Now we're getting up to the final one, which is a promo. And I'm not sure where I got this promo. It could have been at the record store I worked. Could have been in a collection because I kind of have had it a long time. And it's, are you ready? White Label, Wheels of Fire, The Cream. A double record, Near Mint. Not For Sale promo, White Label. So... A pretty a pretty nice promo and I know Nolan out there or Noble uh, records out there loves the promos it's not a timestamp promo but it's a white label promo and you all know this record so I'm not gonna open it but that's it so there it is I kept it under an hour which is what my intent was it's only uh, 30 minutes or so 32 minutes or so so thanks to Noble Records and Thanks for doing this uh, vinyl tag with us. I hope you like it, a summer vinyl tag. Uh, I just did one the other day to uh, get the uh, audio, the auditory channel going again, uh, Doug's channel. And we did a, uh, a one, two, three, go, which is on my channel. You can watch that. So keep rocking. And if you haven't subbed, uh, please sub. We'll really appreciate it. And we'll see you later. Thanks a lot. And uh, keep rocking. Ciao. I'll just show this white label again. Shutting it off.